morning beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amity Gilmore and this is my life. If you're new here, I post weekly content on the subjects of gastroparesis awareness, productivity, routines, and sometimes some fake devotionals. So if any of those topics interest you, then be sure to click that subscribe button. And also don't forget to ring the notification bell in order to stay updated from new videos coming from me twice a week. Today I decided that I will be sharing with you guys my gastroparesis story. For those of you who are new to this channel, hello and welcome. I have a condition called gastroparesis, which is the partial paralyzing of the stomach. It took a while to get diagnosed and to find out what was going wrong. However, I am blessed that it wasn't as long to get diagnosed as most people with gastroparesis. And that is kind of the reason I started this channel because part of me finding the right doctor to see to get a proper diagnosis was due to research that I had to do on my own at home on my computer. And some of that research did actually include YouTube videos from people with gastroparesis. So my hope with this channel is that I can raise awareness for this condition so people can know more about it and that there can be better diagnosis in the future. And and much better treatment as well. So let's get into this video and spread some awareness. So at the time in shooting this video, it is February 2021. However, this story starts back in June 2019. 2019 was such a great year for me. It was a year that I was free from school and education and was out in the big world to find out what I wanted to do with my life. I was doing an internship with my church and part of that meant that I was running different Christian youth camps and on top of that I was also working two jobs. The year prior to 2019 was my year of the HSC and I was having an issue with stress eating, I will admit. I was stress eating to get through year 12. Whenever I was studying, I had a whole bunch of food with me that I could just snack on. So by May of 2019, I weighed 80 kilos and I was quite large, let's just say that. I had gotten to 80 kilos around about the 26th of May, which was my mother's birthday. And looking back on that now, my grandma had told me that she had noticed that it was a bit odd on her birthday that she had seen quite a bit of a large distended stomach. And although I was overweight, she said it was disproportioned and the stomach was actually quite big. My grandma remembers looking at it on the day of her birthday party thinking, that's kind of a little odd. A week after my mum's 40th birthday, I was scheduled to go down to Sydney for a camp that I was a part of and leading on. It's like a massive camp down South Sydney. The camp was going great. However, unfortunately, it was the last night of the camp. We just finished a teaching session down in the auditorium. I was walking out with my friend. My friend didn't feel too well, so she kind of just needed to sit down a rock and was like, yeah, you go up ahead and get something to eat and get ready to, to go to bed and call the night. I went on, all of a sudden, I'm walking from where the food is to where I'm sleeping in the cabin that I was staying at, and I just was crippled in so much pain. It literally hurt so much that I couldn't move. I could only move a little bit to get to a rock that was like on the side of the path. I moved there and I was in a lot of pain and I remember I was with another one of my friends and I was like, can you please get like the camp mom, please get someone, I'm not feeling good. And I remember my friend was like, you okay, is everything all right? I was like, I don't know what's going on, just get, just get her, it's all good. And I was trying to act cool and trying to act calm, like, yeah, it's okay, like it hurts, but like, you know, I'm, I'm doing fine. <laughs> 
clean. <laughs> I'm doing all good. So the camp mum had came. She basically had said, alright, we're going to take you to the nurse station. Because it's a big camp, they have a nurse station. They took me there. At this point in the night, it was around about 10.30ish, 10, 10 o'clock. And I ended up going to the nurse station. And the doctor that was usually at the nurse station had just been called, I guess. He was on call or something. So he had to go to the hospital. There was no doctor on camp. Or so we thought. Turns out one of the leaders who was on camp, not as a doctor, but as a leader, was on camp. And it turns out it was actually my co-leader, which I had no idea he was a doctor. But anyway, they then went to go get my co-leader who came and spoke with the nurse and they kind of talked a bit. I don't know what they said. I don't know what was being discussed. I was elsewhere sitting down on a chair trying to like keep the like pain in and make sure it didn't hurt so much. My co-leader came, who's also the doctor by the way, came and said, hey, look, it's not looking good, so we're going to send you to Wollongong Hospital, to the ED there, and just make sure you get checked out and that everything's okay. At this point, it's probably around about 11 o'clock now, I'm on my way to Wollongong Hospital. We get to Wollongong Emergency Department, and I remember I was watching the TV, I was just like so tired, and on TV there was some... TV show, I think it was like a New Zealand TV show about like rich people, I don't know. I ended up going in to see the doctor and he didn't take a blood test because something I want to mention is I was so afraid of needles and blood tests. It was a major fear that I had that I didn't want to get any of it done. Now that's not a problem because I literally go to get a needle three times a month, one time to get a blood test, twice to get IV fluids. Not much of a big deal anymore. I can literally look at it going in and not even faint. So, However, at this time, I was so scared of needles, so they didn't take the blood test. The doctor then came and sat on my bed and said, look, I just want to ask you a question. I see you've got a lot of acne. How long has that been going? And I said, well, I didn't really get acne much as a kid apart from like the few sort of little pimples, but my acne has seemed to spike since last year. And he said, the only reason I ask is because I think you might have a thing called PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. I was like, oh, what's that? What does it mean? Like, and I was kind of like, is it bad? Like, what does it mean? <laughs> the doctor had said, well, it's something that a lot of women live with. I'm not saying that this is what you have, but it might be something that you need to look into. So, at the ED there, apart from a urine sample, I didn't really do any other tests. He had then said that, uh, is it alright if we admit you? And I told him, no, like, I need to get on a bus tomorrow to travel to my home, which is like six hours up north, and I have no way of getting home if it's not for that bus. He said, okay, well, I'll let you go home, but as soon as you get home, I want you to see a doctor within the next 48 hours, and if you can't get in to see a doctor in that time period, then go straight to ED. And I was like, thinking in my head, like, this sounds serious, like, <laughs> what is PCOS? Is it... What is going on? The next morning, it was like 1am in the morning or like 2am. Actually, I think it was 3am when I got back to camp. I slept and I remember I woke up the next day and they didn't wake me up for bacon. And they were having bacon that morning and I was so upset. Because mind you, this is before I started getting the loss of appetite and everything. So I was really annoyed they didn't wake me up for bacon. But nevertheless, I ended up getting back on the bus that morning and going home and I'm just going to stop that here. I've got a friend coming so I will carry this story on later. I just had Bible study or more like reading the Bible with a friend which is super cool I do that on Mondays I read the Bible with a friend from church my eggs are cooking so first I gotta have my tablet so I'll go get that what you gotta do cool where, where was I up to that's right 
I did not want to get a blood test. At the time, I'd been eating trash. I'd just been eating a lot of sugar, a lot of fatty foods. And I remember calling my grandparents before I called my mom and said, hey, or I think I sent a text. And I said to them something along the lines of, hello, how are you going? I would ended up in hospital. I don't know what's going on, but I have to see a doctor. Oh, my reflux is terrible today, sorry. And mom picks me up from the bus stop. On the way home from the bus stop, I'm explaining to mom what happened. And now, just hear me out for a second. My family's kind of history is in like the farmlands of the marina area of Australia. Basically very tough, she'll be right mate sort of Aussie farmers. We do not go to the hospital. We do not go to the doctors very much unless there's something we can physically see that's wrong. Unless there's a limb cut off on the other side of the room or, you know, there's a bone sticking out. Like, we pretty much hardly ever, well, at the time, hardly ever would go to emergency or a doctor's surgery or anything like that. The only times I remember going to a doctor's surgery or a hospital was when I would dislocate my knee and need to get it dislocated back in. Dislocated back in? No, popped back in. So I get home and mom's reading my discharge papers and I remember she came up to me and she was like, yeah, I think you're just eating trash. I think you just need to like clean up your diet. Here you go, here's the discharge papers. You know, scally o on sort of. So I decided to change my diet and I changed it to gluten-free, dairy-free and a whole bunch of other sort of things. I was eating mainly vegetables and fruit and organic grains and flowers. You know, I didn't really think I needed any hospital intervention. Part of this also was because the doctor at the emergency department in Wollongong had said I would need to get a blood test and I was so scared of that fact I did not want to get a blood test so we decided to fix up my diet and sure enough we fixed up my diet and things seemed well I mean not really improved because that was just a one night sort of crazy event that happened the next day I woke up and I was fine and it never really came back I didn't have any of that issue <laughs> at all throughout the entirety of the rest of the year. The rest of the year I did a lot of stuff. I went on a camp, I traveled a long way up north to record my own music in Byron Bay. Everything was going right for me and I felt like I was kind of in top, on top of the world. Also at the end of 2019 I also moved out of my family home and moved into a small apartment connected to a house that I basically rented myself. I also had what seemed to be a stable job at the time, so everything was going well for me. Hey guys, just a side note that I thought I'd document there that's kind of a bit of a different topic. Um, Gastroparesis topic obviously, but not like to do with this current topic, Gastroparesis topic of the video. But I was literally just cooking my eggs. And I got this massive, like, boom, sort of stab feeling in my chest. And then when I breathed, it got worse. And it felt really weird. And I felt lightheaded, like I was going to faint. I've never felt that before. And <laughs> I'm kind of freaking out a little. I just put a thing on, like, the support group I'm part of for gastroparesis to kind of be like, Hey, guys, is this normal? <laughs> Should I be concerned? Apparently I should be calling an ambulance and going to the hospital. Uh, I don't want to! It's gone now though. Should I go to the hospital? I've got so much I want to do today. I don't feel like... Oh. Alright, so long story short, I was going to go busking after I filmed this video, but I actually have to now <laughs> go to the doctor's surgery to actually get my heart checked because I am on medication that can affect my heart, which I'll explain later on in the video. This is not how I thought my day was going to go, but oh well. Yes, I just ate an egg like I do every lunch. So I'd fixed up my diet 
and I was doing pretty well. However, it was the lead up to Christmas and I started to feel that I was getting those pains again, but they were very subtle and I didn't think much of it and I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe it's actually not that bad. That's going to be a common theme you're going to hear a lot in this because mentally I was well but physically I wasn't so mentally because my brain is working properly and my brain is basically fine I thought you know I'm fine when really my body was struggling and I did doubt whether I was actually experiencing it really harshly which I actually hear a lot of other people with gastroparesis and chronic illnesses actually do. They underestimate how they're actually feeling and they think that what they're feeling they're making up in their head and I think a lot of that is because that's what we're led to believe by some people. Some people because they can't see a physical illness even though we do have a physical illness because it's invisible a lot of people tell us you know oh maybe you're not that sick or they lead us to believe that we think that they think that we're not that sick. That's a mouthful. So I underestimated it, but I was still eating healthy and everything was all right until we come to New Year's Eve of 2019. I was supposed to be spending New Year's Eve with a friend of mine, but my friend got gastro and so I couldn't hang out with that friend. So then I ended up hanging out with my friend Is I met her at the donut after I finished work on New Year's Eve and we went to Crescent Head, which is a nice beach. We had a great time. When we are finished in Crescent Head, we travelled back to Port Macquarie where we went to kind of the New Year's celebrations, like a Christian outreach ministry that I usually go to every year on New Year's Eve. It's at the beach where the fireworks are. We both had work the next day, so we had made the decision that as soon as it turned 12 o'clock and it was the New Year, we'd go straight back home to our beds. So that is exactly what we did. As soon as it was 12 o'clock, you know, it was all, you know, Happy New Year, all right, let's go. That is where we get to the next day. The next day, I woke up to my alarm at 7 o'clock, or was it 6 o'clock? Either way, it was early. I got out of bed and then I fainted. By the time I came to it, it was 10 o'clock and I freaked. I was supposed to be starting work at 9 o'clock, so I had to ring them and say, hey, I am so sorry. I don't know what happened, but I collapsed. They didn't take it too well, unfortunately. It was kind of a bit rough. Obviously, I felt awful. I started to feel sick for about a week and I didn't really think much at the time that it was connected to my health scare back in June. The previous year, I kind of thought, well, I think I've just got a viral infection or a viral bug, tummy bug or something. I went to the hospital and they had said, yeah, I think it's just a, a viral infection with vertigo. And they put that on my doctor's certificate. So when I went to work, I was like, yeah, this, this is just, you know, it's going to be fine. I've got this. However, it didn't go away. Not the next week, or the week after that, or the week after that, or the week after that. And this is when the nausea and loss of appetite came in, and I wasn't eating. And this is when a lot of my friends and family thought that something was definitely wrong. Because I was someone who loved food. I was the sort of kid that would be at the food table picking out on all the food, not really thinking that there are other people that want to eat the food as well, and I'd basically take all the food for myself. I was greedy. I was gluttonish. I just loved food, okay? I loved food. So when I stopped eating, a lot of people started to worry. This is not normal for me. I usually eat so much food. So everyone was so confused. So people knew there was something not right because... Here I am, someone who loves food, and I'm not eating it. At this point, I was going into emergency and out of emergency, getting tests done. I was mainly trying to work with my GP rather than going into emergency all the time. And my GP had got me to see the gastroenterologist, the local one. 
but I didn't actually, I wasn't able to see them or get into them till later on because they had quite a bit of a waiting list. But things were going really bad and we had no idea what was going on. With the fainting, I remember on one occasion I had to get an MRI to check if things were okay in the brain because you know it's a vertigo so I have to go to the doctors now as I explained before but after I get back I'm going to explain to you how my first test went which was the MRI so see you soon hey guys so I was just on my computer editing the video and I just realized how long this video is going for so I'm actually gonna cut it off here and there'll be a part two that will come out next Tuesday so keep your eyes eyes is or whatever are out for that i don't know what i'm saying but for now that is my video for today i hope you guys liked it and if you did then be sure to give it a big thumbs up and if you liked it even more then don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one remember look out for next tuesday for part two of this video coming out love you guys god bless